Hi friends, thanks so much for joining me today for a really fun card using some rainbow thread. I learned this technique from someone I follow on Instagram. Her handle is Creative Ibby. So thank you Ahiba for letting me use your technique on my card today. So to start my card today, I've got two very different dies. I first got the stitched rectangle die from Simon Says Stamp that I've cut from my card panel. This card panel is three and three quarters by five inches. And then we've got this cloud die with this face and this is from the MFT Straight Up Rainbow Dynamics. I've die cut this face twice using black and pink cardstock so that I can have the eyes and mouth in black and the cheeks in pink. And I'm using one of the negatives to inlay those pieces back in to make sure that the alignment is perfect. Now before we start the fun part of the card, which is the threading, I decided that we needed a protective element. So I decided to add an acetate window just so we don't have little fingers or anyone's curiosity stroking those thread pieces like it's a guitar, right? And then that would just ruin and destroy the card. So I thought the acetate was a great idea and I decided to lay that down first. So I'm using some thin score tape. I've already attached the acetate, so now I'm gonna add another layer to hold down the thread once I start threading. I'm using the grid marks on my mat to line up that open window so that I can calculate how much space I need between each color. And I've chosen very vibrant colors since the thread are so thin, you wanna choose a color that's gonna stand out. All right, so I measured that I had about a half inch for each color with a small margin on the sides or the top and bottom as you see the card laid on the grid mat right now. I laid down my first strand of thread just below that first full line, creating a border for myself to work with so that I can evenly space the color within that half inch window. So I've placed that bottom thread at the bottom of my half inch spacing, if that makes sense. And then I'm gonna center my third strand and then space the next few strands just in between the strands that are currently there. Now you can stop here with the five strands, but I felt like I could fill it in for a total of nine strands and make it even fuller. I usually don't make prototypes, but since this was my first time using thread, I played with the spacing earlier and created a card using five strands. And now I've decided to fill it in even more. So I'm adding more strands of thread in between what's already there for a total of nine instead of five. And I'll show you the prototype later on in this video so that you can see the difference. It really does make a huge difference in the color and vibrancy of your card. So we will keep moving along here. I'll go through all of the colors and show you my process. Once I finish with one color, I just repeat the process with the other color. Um, I think it's really important to create that margin to work with. So doing that first strand and then that last strand, the center strand, and then making sure that you space everything out evenly as you go, that's very helpful. I'm leaving lots of overhang on the thread because it gives it that tapestry look and it's so cool. I will be trimming some of it off later, but I wanted to leave plenty of space for that. So at this point, I'm done with my rainbow rug on a card, right? So I am making sure that everything stays down properly and has lots of dimension. So I'm adding a border of foam adhesive all the way around, and this just gives that thread another layer of protection. So now before I start adhering things to this panel, I wanted a background. So I'm using this Lawn Fawn Dandy Day Petite Paper Pack and I'm gonna use this lighter blue panel here just to give the background some color and to create a nice frame or background for my rainbow frame. I'm gonna cut this down. I'm gonna make it slightly wider than five and a half. You'll see why in a little bit and then perfectly at four and a quarter here. And I'll center my rainbow panel right over that to center from right to left. And then the reason why I cut it a little bit wider than five and a half is because I wanted to trim the overhang of my thread with the length of my card because I don't want it to hang past my card at the bottom or the top. So I hope that makes sense. I'm just going to adhere this down and then I'm going to return to my trimmer and then I will cut off the top and the bottom so that the thread is the same length as the margins of the card. I've got my card back in my trimmer now. I'm just gonna straighten up my thread a little bit to make sure that it cuts evenly. And as I chop it off, everything gets chopped off together and it creates a nice border for that edge. And then I'll do the same to the other side. 
comb out my little threads there and then give it a nice whack and it cuts everything off so nice and cleanly. All right, so we've got this rainbow panel now that it's so beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and attach my cloud. I'm just gonna give a little bit more dimension to it by adding some foam adhesive and adhering that to the bottom of my card. I decided to give the border um, a little bit of a thicker border at the bottom. And really at this point, I realized I could have just put that rectangle stitched window um, at the center of my card instead of cutting it the way I did. The next thing we need is a sentiment. So I've pulled out the Simon Says Stamp banner greetings and I like the sentiment that says sending happy thoughts. So I'll be embossing that with white embossing powder over black cardstock. I've prepared my surface with an anti-static powder tool, added my white embossing powder and heat set it. Then I'll trim it down to get a nice clean sentiment strip with equal borders on both sides. Once I'm done cutting it down, I'll be adding some foam adhesive to adhere it to this window over that rainbow. And I'm gonna use my clear ruler to make sure that I line it up straight. And now I wanna show you the comparison to the five strand rainbow. You'll see there that it's not as bold or as vibrant of a rainbow. And my daughter did choose where she wanted that sentiment strip because this extra card is gonna be hers. And so I really like that there are nine strands, that the color is more vibrant, and that rainbow seems to be more unified. Last but not least, I'm gonna be embellishing my card here with Lucy's Cards Pink Moonstone Iridescent Sequence. I've attached that, and then that finishes my card. Thanks again, Ahiba from Creative Ibby for letting me share this technique for this video. I appreciate you all for stopping by, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye, everyone.